So we need sellotape and glue. OK, so there are first two things that we need. We do need our markers like we do every week. OK, and we're going to need the following out of the box as well. We're going to need one of your red cups and um, one of the small clear cups. So we're going to need one of each of these today. Fantastic. Well done, Eve. OK, red cup and smaller cup. Um, we're also going to need one sheet of white paper and one sheet of card. Now, try to use a red, orange or yellow card. I'll show you why in a second. I'm using yellow today, OK? So we've got a yellow and we won't be using very much of it. We're only going to use a small bit so we'll have lots left over to do something with during the week as well, OK? So I'm going to go through all of that again, just in case you missed it. So we're painting today, so we need our paints. We need our paint brush. We need a piece of kitchen roll or toilet roll to clean your brush and some water, obviously, and an apron or some clothes to protect your clean, lovely clean clothes. We need your markers. We need your scissors and we need your sellotape. OK, and we're also going to need your red cup and your clear cup here. OK, we're going to use those two of those and a piece of white paper and a piece of coloured card. All right. Now, um, while you're getting those ready, I'm going to show you what else we're going to make today, um, which are these really cool lighthouses with our uh, old fashioned lighthouses with the flame on the top because they used to have, they didn't have electricity. So these to light a fire on the top. Here's another one I made yesterday. So here's our little lighthouses that we're making today. All right. So this is what we're doing. I'm going to show you. I've got two cameras going, so I've got to show you in two different angles. Cool. All right. So that's what we're doing today. Um, so we're going to start off and we're going to use our white piece of paper first. And we're going to try and cut this to the right size for our cup first. So we're going to need our cup and our white piece of paper. All right. So with our red cup, we're going to just hold it onto the paper. Now, this is much easier if you do it on the flat on your table. OK. And we're going to use a marker. And we're just going to make a little mark at the top here where the cup meets the paper. Like that. OK, we're just marking where it was there. OK, it's the first mark we're going to do. I'm going to put our cup away for a second. So we just have our white sheet of paper here with that little line, little mark on the top. So we know that that's the height of the, the piece of paper we need. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to hold our piece of paper on either side like this with the tops of our fingers. OK, like that. OK. And on each side, we're just going to mark where the top tip of our finger is. OK, so the tip of my finger is here. And again, this is much easier to do when you're holding it on a table. OK, so that's mine. I've got one line at the top and I've got my little finger marks on each side of the page as well. OK, all right. Brilliant. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut along those lines okay so I'm just going to recap while, the, the, while you guys are finishing off there because I know there's a lot of frantic drawing so what we did is we took our white paper we took our cup we placed it in the center of our white paper and we just marked the top of the cup where it was on the paper and then we held each side of the paper just with our little fingers we didn't kind of hold it too far in we just held it a little bit in and we're just marked where the tip of our fingers were on our page okay that's what we've done. Right. Now we're going to get our scissors. I was going to call this a marker. I'm obviously out of practice, guys. And we're going to cut along the line at the top. OK, where we do the top of the cup. Now, this doesn't have to be dead straight, but it would be helpful if it was kind of straight. So I've just cut from one side of the paper all the way across through that line that I drew at the top of the cup. You can kind of see it there. All right. I drew through this line. I uh, cut through the line. OK, and mine look isn't perfectly straight, but it kind of is it's straight as it's going to get for right now. OK, so you've got all this white paper left over for later. You can add this to the selection of paper you can do things with. We are just going to focus on this size paper that we just cut along. OK. The next thing you're going to do, well done, Eve, is we're going to cut from the bottom to the top of the paper through the little line at the side. OK, so it's kind of like the side of a, a, tri a triangle like that. So you're going to cut it slightly sideways like that. 
okay and we're going to do it on the other side as well so we're going to cut through that line that you drew or as close to it as we can from the edge of the paper i did a better job on this side okay so you can kind of see that i cut right through it there so there's the line here and i went from the bottom of the page kind of at an angle like the side of a triangle up to the top here cutting through that line and i end up with kind of a strange shape and um, it's like the bottom of a triangle with the top of it cut off that's the shape that i end up with here okay here's another one i did earlier as well okay so this kind of a shape so that's what we end up with okay now this is going to be um, the main part or the, the building part of our old fashioned lighthouse, okay? And um, I don't know if it's like this everywhere in the world, it probably is, but in Ireland we have, because we're an island, we have lots and lots and lots of lighthouses and they're very, very old. Um, and how you used to identify where you are if you're out in the boat and you're saying, oh God, guys, I don't know where I am. I'm super lost, no idea where I am. You'd say, well, look, this lighthouse is red and white, so we must be in Baltimore. Or this white lighthouse is all white, so we must be in Dublin. This white lighthouse is all black, so we're in Bally Cotton. So that's how they knew. So they were all painted different colours. And today, they're all still painted differently to each other. Even though we think lighthouses are red and white, the stripes used to go different ways, or there was bigger gaps between bigger gaps of white and bigger gaps of red. So what I want you to do today is get imaginative with the design on your lighthouse, okay? So here's one of mine that I did. And this is the kind of traditional red and white stripe one. Okay, but I kind of did them at a bit of an angle. Um, and then I did a nice one yesterday. I just used all my favorite colors and I did three different colors. So I did white, I did pink, and I did purple on mine, okay? Um, now they have other things as well. When I was in America, the stripes go this way, um, vertically or um, portrait along the side. So you could do the stripes that way. Um, you could do dots or spots or anything you like on your design for your lighthouse in your your paints now the thing with the paints remember what i said when we started with the paints at the beginning of the term be mean with paint because we needed to dry before the end of class otherwise we won't be able to finish the project okay so I i'm just going to pick we don't we don't need glue this week no eve we I, don't i said yeah yeah but you said don't be mean with glue. Oh, like, paint, don't paint. Be mean don't be mean with glue and be mean with paint. That's right. And Or chocolate. Don't be mean with chocolate or glue, but you can be mean with paint. That's the only one you can be mean with. All right. Okay, so we're going to start painting on our white sheet of paper. So remember this, the, the narrower part, the part where we did the line at the top is the top of your lighthouse. Okay, and we cut it a funny shape because when we put it onto our cup, we need to do it tighter at the top then at the bottom so it will fit nice and snug at the top okay that's why we did it that shape so I'm going to just start painting I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to do the lines across again but I think I'll do something like this but in different colors okay and you can see I did a little cat here the lighthouse cat and I did a, a rose bush outside but you could do anything you want on them all right so I'm going to do a nice stripe of yellow and nice, something nice and bright on mine um I think and I might do another stripe in green. I, I like doing the three different color stripes. Um, and be mean with the paint so we have it nice and dry. And it doesn't have to be dead straight either, guys, because remember they were painting these by hand as well, out in the wind and being hit by the, the waves. It would have been very difficult to get them to dry and stuff. So um, we're going to do it the whole way around. Does anybody know what they used to use before they had lighthouses? Does anyone know? They used to light uh, big bonfires on the top of high hills or high cliffs. And if there was a storm, people would run up there and light the big high, the cliffs. And they also, also used to light those when they were in trouble. So if your, if your area or, or kingdom was being attacked, you'd light a fire on top like that. A signal, a signal fire is what they were called. And then um, your neighbours would come and help sometimes. So that it's kind of cool. And a lot of the places where we have lighthouses in the world were places that they had signal fires a thousand years ago. So it's quite cool. It's still the same. They were using the same area. Mm -hmm. um, are, are, they, are they putting it around their top already? Or are they just They're painting, painting it first. We're painting it first. Yeah, yeah. So I was just, no problem. I was just kind of showing them there the example because it needs to be a strange shape. That's why we cut it the, the strange shape. So we're just painting on 
our stripes or our decorations now first. That's what we're doing, okay? That's what we're doing first. All right? So I'm just painting on yellow and I think I might do another color as well just because I like lots of colors. You could do a rainbow if you wanted, spots, stripes, wiggly lines, any way you like. Um, and I'm gonna put mine in my bathroom window because I've got lots of seashells and um, I've got sea creatures in my bathroom. So I'm gonna add it to my collection of my uh, my sea stuff. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so I'm gonna paint, I think I'm gonna do green on the top and it's a nice kind of, the green paint, uh, this uh, term is a nice kind of light green. So kind of a, a lime color. So I'm gonna use that. So it looks like, I'm gonna call this a lemon and lime lighthouse. You could also come up with a name for your lighthouse. Uh, it could be anything you like. You can name it after your own house or your favorite beach or whatever you like. Okay, so look, I've got my lemon and lime color. Is my, my lovely lime on the top. Um, and I'm gonna paint another stripe of that. And then I will be done with my painting part. And um, what we will do then when the paint is dry, we'll do all the details like, you know, the pet outside or the bushes or the trees or the windows and doors. We'll do all of those with a marker um, last, very last before we stick everything together, just to give our paint enough time to dry. Okay. And we'll be, we'll be painting again using sponges in a few weeks, but we're going to keep that for a special occasion. And um, so we're going to just keep going here. And now I think I'm almost done with my lovely painting. How are you guys getting on? Are we good? Well done, guys. Fantastic. Painting away there. Well done. Fantastic. Great stuff. Lovely to see you back, guys. I'm so sorry I was missing for a while, but I'm back now. And Lee, you were very good to Leah. Leah, was, Leah had a great time with you. So she said you were a great, great bunch. And she had loads of fun and you were super nice. So thank you for being lovely to Leah. I appreciate it. Now, so when you're done with your painting, you can do what we always do with the paint, painted stuff. And we're just going to pop it somewhere warm and dry for a few minutes till we finish the end of class. I like to put mine up here. I actually put mine on my laptop keyboard because it's kind of hot. So it dries, it dries it fast. So I put it up, up on my laptop. So what we're going to do um, next is when you're finished with your paints and you're painting, you just put it somewhere that no one's gonna step on it or sit on it um, and you're gonna leave it dry. Um, remember to clean that brush of yours. Um, and what we had those little hints about the paint brushes was to dry it flat like this. So the paint doesn't go down onto the inside of the handle of the brush. Okay, so that was a little hint that we had. Um, so we're popping it down like that. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to your card and we're going to make the flames next. But I'll wait for you guys to catch up a little bit there. All right. Does anyone have any news for me? Because I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Any, any news? Uh, I have news. Do you have news, Eve? What do you have news about? I climbed Diamond Hill. Oh, wow. Cool. So you went hill walking. Wow, that's very cool. What about you, Emma Jane? Any news for me? No, 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 no. Come here. The weather in Cork is awful. How many of you were in Cork? There's only, yeah, two of you were in Cork. Isn't the weather terrible? I'm in Cork City, right? And it's literally been miserable for the last two days. What is with the thunder and lightning today? It was crazy. And here we are making lovely summer stuff. Yes, Alexander, did you have something to say? No, when we went out, like it was raining and it, it and we heard lightning. Yeah. It's, it was really loud, wasn't it? The lightning and the thunder was really, really loud. Uh, it scared me, it scared me a little bit. But you know what? We were talking about um, sounds that that scared us, right? When I was a kid, when I was really small, much smaller than you guys, I used to go camping to a place called Carnsore Point in near Ross Lair in Wexford. And they have a big lighthouse. And I was terrified because we were there in a storm and it was like bah, making a really loud noise and scaring me and waking me up in the middle of the night. So my mom told me that it was the lighthouse saying things to the ships like stay away from the rocks. And still I'm an adult now. Every time I hear a lighthouse 
making noise, I actually say the noise. I actually say that, stay away from the rocks. And all of my adult friends think I'm insane. But I think it's a cool way to remember that it's not scary and it's there to help people. <laughs> but you just reminded me of that there, Alec Alexander, when you were talking about thunder and lightning and noises that scare people normally. But yeah, it's kind of cool. Now, how are we getting on with our painting? Are we good? Are we finished our painting? Are we just letting it dry? Brilliant. Well done, Emma Jane. Oh, I love the colours. Oh, it's like mine from yesterday. You chose the same kind of colours as me. Well done. Oh, and I like love the rainbow sideways. Look, Eve, that's awesome. Well done, guys. Oh, lads, everyone, that's perfect. Okay. Mine is a rainbow sideways. It's very cool. Yeah, I can see that. It's kind of like a rainbow slash um design. Well done. Really, really nice. Now, don't make, make sure none of you use too much paint because we want it to dry. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move on and I'm going to show you how we're making our flames for the top of our um, lighthouses like this, okay? Because as I said, they used to use an actual flame like this and they had it uh, in, a, in a big glass house on the top of the, of the lighthouse um, and they used to just keep it lighting all the time. Can you imagine your job is just to keep the fire lighting all the time at night? and not let it go out so ships didn't crash. So that would have been really, really bad if you fell asleep. Um, and you can see it again, I did it in this one. So I'm gonna show you little cool tricks on how to draw flames. And this comes in really handy when, you, um, when you're when you drawing flames coming out of a dragon's mouth, or if you're drawing a campfire, or candles on a birthday cake. This is really kind of cool tricks to draw flames that look realistic, okay? I'm gonna draw mine much bigger than you'll need to on yours. So what we're going to do with yours is we're going to do kind of the same thing as we did with our red cup on our paper. We're going to do the same thing with our clear cup, our small one, on our card. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just at the corner down here, just hold it at the corner down here like this. It's hard to see because it's clear. And I'm just going to make a mark at the top of it. And the reason why we're making a mark like that on the top of the page, um, on the top of the where the cup was, is that you don't draw your flame bigger than this. So you know you need to draw your flame smaller than this line, okay? Because otherwise it won't fit inside the cup. So it's a little trick. So what we did again is we took our clear cup, put it on the corner of our, um, our card, and we drew a line on the top where it meets the card like that, just a tiny little mark, okay? So we know when we're drawing our flame for our, the top of our lighthouse, it needs to be smaller and fit into this little section here, all right? And as I said, we're not gonna use a lot of this card, so you'll have lots of card left over to make something else during the week. And you're also gonna have the rest of that white paper that we cut off the top of that sheet to do something with as well, so you can get crafty with those things. Okay, so I'm gonna show you mine much bigger so you can see it a lot better. Um, so I'm gonna use the other side of my card over here, okay? So you have your line, I'm just gonna do a bigger line. Let's pretend that's my line, okay? And I'm going to draw a tear shape, okay? So it's kind of like a triangle at the top and rounded at the bottom. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go all the way up to the line, almost all the way down to the bottom of the card. I'm leaving a little bit at the bottom down here because that's going to be the section that's stuck onto the cup. You can kind of see it here, look like that. All right, you can kind of see it there. So I'm just going to leave a little section. So I've drawn a teardrop shape first, okay? That's the first shape that I've done. Now inside the teardrop, I'm gonna do kind of a teardrop but it looks like it has a bite taken out of it. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. It's kind of the same shape for most of it. And then I'm gonna do a squiggle at the side so it looks like someone's taken a chunk out of it, a bite out of the cake. So I've done mostly the same shape and I've just done a squiggle in at the top like someone's taken a bite out of it or ripped it in the center like that, okay? Now, you can leave your flame like this. That's absolutely fine as a flame. Or you can start adding other things to it, okay? And it's good that we're using the black marker or a dark marker because when you're using the black marker or a dark marker, it adds highlight to something. It makes something stand out a bit more, okay? And even when you color it in, it makes it look a bit more dramatic. So you can see the difference between that one there, that one there, and you can see it in this one here with the black. There's less black in this one. It looks a bit less dramatic. OK, so we've gotten our teardrop done and our teardrop with a slice or a bite taken out of it. 
and at the sides towards the top we're just going to add a squiggle because flames don't kind of burn in straight lines all right so a bit of a squiggle at the side like this so i've done one over here and i just added a little squiggle here and you can add a couple of squiggles okay and they don't have to be perfect and in fact if they're kind of a bit squiggly and a bit messy that looks okay too because flames aren't dead straight they kind of wiggle a lot when they're on fire and um, that's what fire does and they move around in the air okay so i've just done a couple of squiggles well done Emma Jane and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to colour mine in in different colours. Now if you're using a red piece of card if you use yellow the yellow marker it kind of turns it orange a little bit which is cool because there's orange in the flames or if you're using yellow paper if you use red it kind of looks orange you know that kind of thing. So get creative and get inventive with it and see what we can do um, and what colours we can use. So I'm doing some red which kind of looks like a dark color orange in the middle like that. I'm going to use some orange as well, my orange marker. Um, but you know, you don't have to do your flames kind of like orange and red and yellow like they always do. Um, you can do different color flames. Um, in Harry Potter and stuff, they have purple flames and green flames and things. So you could do whatever you want, I guess. Um, get a bit creative. Speaking of being creative as well, um, I put a thing up on the uh, Facebook page today, which is they're looking for people to design the Irish book token. They're looking for kids to design it. So there's a competition. So I popped the information about that up on the Facebook page today. So you might want to do that if you're being creative. You can kind of see, look, I've done some more red here at the side. I've done red in the middle. I've done orange and, and red um, squiggles. But now I'm going to have to do mine in the proper size down here so I'm gonna to have to start all over again so while you guys are finishing yours off so all I did was first is I drew a big teardrop shape like that and then I did another teardrop shape in the center but I kind of did a squiggle at the top to cut make it look like someone's taken a bite out of it or a chunk out of it here we go and then I added some squiggles to the side to make it look more like a flame um, at the side okay so I just added a bit of squiggles like that to the side okay and I'm going to color that in so that's how I did that um, yes Eve the red marker on the orange makes it orange yes exactly yeah so you can do a mix of whatever colors you want Eve and you're right when you mix in the red and the yellow it makes it orange and stuff like that so you're absolutely right. The red uh, and the orange make it makes orange. Yeah, it does in different shades of the same colour as well. So you're absolutely right. So yeah, well done. And I think the black lines in it make it look more dramatic. It's like, oh no, there's a fire. Um, It makes it more realistic. That's my opinion anyway. So I'm just doing some other colours there as well. So yeah. So these are my flames and when I have it done what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the bottom of my flame here and I'm just going to do two straight lines from the bottom to the end of the card all right because that is going to be the section that we are going to sellotape to the top of the cup in a second so it stands straight up all right so two straight lines like that okay and you don't have to color that bit in or anything no one's going to see it okay and when you have all that done, we're going to cut that out and we're going to do the same on the other side. So once you cut it out, you're going to colour in the, the other side of it as well, because you're going to be able to see both sides. Like I showed you earlier, you can see this side of it and you can see the other side as well. OK, so there are the two sides. So when you've got it cut out, it's easier to colour in the other side. So you're not ruining your lovely design by cutting sections out of it after you've done all the hard work. So here I am, I'm just gonna cut it out. I've drawn the two lines at the bottom and I'm gonna leave those attached, okay? I'm not gonna cut those off and I'm gonna cut out my design, my flames and I'm going to then color in the other side, all right? There we go. Okay, so that's one side done of mine. There you go and the other side is plain so I'm going to get busy colouring in the other side and because we haven't drawn any sections on this side yet you can go mad on this side and um, 
Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same on both sides. You can go a bit more squiggly with your lines if you like. Completely up to you. We can add more colors. You could do different colors on this side. So I'm gonna do some red and some I'm going to add some black onto it then as well because I want it to look a bit more dramatic. So I did a different technique on the back. I didn't do any of my teardrop. I just did lots of different squiggly lines in the orange and the red and the yellow. Okay, so that's what I did with that one. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some black lines, just black squiggles in it. Just to highlight a bit more and make it more dramatic looking. All right, so that's what I did with this one. So I did squiggly line technique on this one. And the first one I did was my teardrop trick. All right. So there are two different ways to do the fire. Okay. And I've cut that out and now that is ready to stick on to my cup. How are we getting on there, guys? Are we good with your flames? Cutting out there as well. Oh, well done, Roisin. That's really pretty. Well done. Oh, great stuff, Eve. Fabulous, Frida. Well done. Well done, everybody. Great stuff. So we're working away there and we're colouring in the second side of both of yours. Now, don't forget not to cut off that little tail that we've given it at the end here, okay? So we need to, that to stick on. Well done, Isabel. So we need those to stick onto the top of the cup. And when it comes time to stick it onto the top of the cup, we're just going to bend it over like this. Just bend it over a little bit like that. And we're going to use a little bit of sellotape and sellotape it to the top of the cup. OK, so I've got little sellotape sections I've cut already from earlier at sitting at the side of my table. And I'm going to sellotape that little tail that we made like that to the top and the centre of the cup. OK. So by bending it over, it means that the flame will stand straight up like that because we stuck the bent over section onto the cup and it makes it stand straight up. All right, there you go. There's another little trick for you, okay? Um, if we were making it stand up on its own and not covering it up, I might do something like on both sides, but because we're covering it up with something else in a second, we only need one because it'll be protected with the other cup, okay? So what we did was we folded over that little tail and we sell it, taped it to the top of the cup. Well done, guys, well done. And when you've that done, you're going to pop on the little cap on top of it and to the centre like that. And we're going to use more sellotape to sellotape that on to the cup. Now, when you sellotape things on, sometimes it can be all um, messy, OK? So the trick when you're sellotaping something on is you're going to put the sellotape onto the, the clear one first, like this. And you're going to get your finger and really stick it on to the bottom of it first, okay? Because look, otherwise you're gonna have a weird line that does it like this. So we want the bottom of the cup to stick on before we stick on the tape to the side of the mug. Now I'm gonna do that again, so don't worry. And if there's any lumps or lines, you can just rub them out with your finger. If you keep rubbing it, it should come out a little bit flatter, okay? I'm gonna do that again. So I'm gonna get another bit of tape and I'm gonna stick it onto the side of the clear cup like that. And I'm really going to make sure that it's stuck in here onto the red cup at the bottom as well. So I'm sticking my finger in here and making sure it's stuck on. So it doesn't have that weird kind of, you know, sideways. Oh, look, I use sellotape. Look, we don't want everyone to know we use sellotape. OK, and we're going to stick it down to the side like that. So when it's stuck onto the cup as well, it's not going to move anywhere. OK, if if you stick it on to um, triangly let's use that as a word if you stick it on like this it's going to move around a bit so by sticking it on and making sure the sellotape is stuck to the top fantastic well done Emma Jane and um, you you can hardly see the sellotape as well so that's really good okay so remember what I said about those lines just give them a rub if there's an ugly line on it and it'll rub it out a little bit more okay so this is our beginning of our beautiful old tiny uh, lighthouse all right now how is everybody getting on? Have we all got our, our flames stuck onto the top of our lighthouses? Well done, Roisin. Fantastic. Alexander's working away there. Fantastic. Well done. 
Well done, Emma Jane. Oh, guys, they are fantastic. Well done, guys. All righty. Well done, Oscar. Fantastic. So what we've done is we've just stuck the stuff, stuff on the top here and we're ready to go back to our painting. Now, I'm going to check if my painting is dry. And yes, it is. And I know this because it's all curled up. All right. So have a look at it and see if your, your house is dry. Okay. The main part of your painting is dry. If it isn't, it's okay. You can finish the drawing part of it off later when it is dry. Okay. So don't panic if it isn't dry. We only need the bottom really to be dry so you can draw your little door and stuff on. Okay. Now, um, before we stick this on and just while other people are catching up, we can do stuff with your markers to decorate our lighthouse. Remember what I was saying earlier about um, how they decorated their houses. So they were all different color stripes uh, so you knew where you were in the world. And also they all had pets because they were very lonely living on islands. So I have a little cat waiting outside for me. Um, you could have a dog or a gerbil or a tiger. It's up to you. It's your design. Doesn't matter who what it is. I have a little rose bush here on the side of the door. My door is black and I have some windows so they can see out. On this one, I have some ivy climbing up the wall here. Okay, and I have another cat because I love cats. Um, but you could do any kind of doors you want. So I think I'm going to do a half door, like an old wooden door on the front of mine one. Um, and when you're drawing on your door or your um, artwork, make sure it's in the centre at the widest part of the paper, okay? So the centre at the white, because when you wrap it around, you don't want to lose any of the detail that's at the sides. So we're going to go with the centre and we're going to draw. So I'm going to do a door at the beginning of mine. Um, and it's going to be a half door. And I have wooden panels on it and a handle. And I'm just going to colour that in with my marker, okay? Because my paint is lovely and dry. If your paint isn't dry yet, that's okay because you can always do this when it's stuck on. So that's, that's my half door here. It's open, it's dark on the inside and it's got wooden panels. So I've done wooden lines on it and I'm going to colour that in. I think I'm going to colour it in red because I've always wanted a house with a red door. All right. Um, but you could do any kind of door you want. You could do like a castle door. You could do a doggy door. You could do just a regular square door. It's up to yourselves. That's why I'm not kind of showing you what to do for this bit. Because I want you guys to use your imagination. Um, and every lighthouse is going to be as unique as you guys. And in reality as well, all the lighthouses are different. So that's kind of cool. Um, I visited a lighthouse one time in America. And the lighthouse keepers they was on an island, so they didn't have anywhere they could get fruit and vegetables. And they grew this beautiful garden of vegetables and fruit because it's much hotter than it is here. And now you can go out to the island and there's a big restaurant in, in inside the lighthouse and they use all the things from the garden that still grows there. Well done, Emma Jane. That's my lovely red door that I've done on mine. Okay. I'm going to do some windows above it as well so the people who live there can see outside. Okay. Um, different kinds of windows. I'm kind of doing those um, windows with the crosses in the middle, the panes of glass. And I'm going to do kind of three windows and I'm kind of going to do one, two, three, just because I can. It's my design. But yeah, that uh, restaurant was super cool and all the food was made out of things they grew in their garden. So these are my windows. Really, really simple windows. You could do curtains on the inside if you want. You can decorate them in any way you want. All right, so there are my windows there. You can kind of see those. Um, I'm going to give them some red curtains to match the door on the inside. Because um, I think the people who live here, they're a family, I think. So I'm going to do nice, nice curtains. But it must have been really lonely living on an island, having to make sure the light never went out. And um, so they must have had loads of hobbies and things. Do you know what I'm going to do? I think I might draw a bike or something outside just as well instead of my cat this time. I'm going to draw a bike. Like that. So I know that you guys are really good at drawing. So you can do whatever you want. Something. Yeah, what what you what? Sorry, I missed what you said. I realized something. Yeah. The lighthouse keeper could just sleep all day and stay up all night. 
Yeah, I suppose they could do that, but you know, you'd miss loads of things then, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you miss loads of things? Like hanging out with your children and things. It would kind of suck. Wouldn't they just play in the morning with their kids? I suppose. I suppose. Do you know what? They'd probably have to be homeschooled, wouldn't they? Oh, one more thing. I know this on slow. They walk there for a long time and then they get TV talk. Oh, well, maybe that's how it worked. That's actually really good. That's a really good observation, Alexander. That's probably what happened. So look, this is the front of my lighthouse. I've done a little bike. I've done a fancy half door. I've given them curtains. Um, and I think that's enough on mine because my other ones, I have lovely little plants and things. But I think that's enough on my one. Okay, so how we're going to stick this together is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to need you to have at least two bits of sellotape ready. Okay. So I have one, two pieces of sellotape ready at the side here, at the side of the table, because it's kind of tricky and you're going to need both hands, all right? So just making sure that the door is in the center here, all right? I'm going to just wrap my lighthouse paper around my lighthouse. And it crosses over at the back like this. I'll show you now, see what I mean? It's very difficult to do in the air. Okay. So when I wrap it around, it looks like this at the back. And look, there's a bit that sticks out at the end, but that's okay, because we're going to get rid of that in a minute. All right, so look, we've wrapped it around the lighthouse like that. So I'm making sure my light is in the middle, my door is in the center like that. My bike is over here to the side. And when I wrap it around here, I'm going to use a piece of tape and sellotape from the red bit of the cup onto my lighthouse drawing, okay? Just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere just like that, all right? When you wrap it around, try and get it as tight as you can around the top, because I made the mistake the first time of having it really loose like that, and now it slides around in my cup, and I don't want that, okay? So try and get it as tight as you can onto the cup, like this, as tight as you can. And we're gonna put a bit of tape, when you cross it over a bit of tape from the top, onto your lovely painting, and then you can free one hand, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take the second piece of tape, and tape it across here, okay? So it stays on, so the paper is stuck to itself. We're just sticking the sellotape on here. It's hard to see in this light here, but like it's stuck on here, okay? You can kind of see it in the light there now. So we use one piece of tape at the top to stick it to the cup, another piece of tape in the center to stick it to itself. And I'm gonna get another piece of sellotape ready for in a second, because this is gonna be the most important piece. And I'm gonna pop it over here to the side. Okay. And I have all of this paper here sticking out at the end. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to trim it. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to go along the bottom of the cup like this. And I'm just going to trim off that extra paper that I don't need anymore. Okay. Really, really simple. Or you can tuck it in if you want. That's okay. But I'm just going to cut it around like that at the end. Well done, Eve. That's great. Can you have a look. Well done. Oh, the butter, the, the rainbow effect looks fantastic when you've stuck it onto the cup. Well done, Roisin. The windows. Oh, I love the circle windows, the porthole windows. I'm totally stealing that idea for tomorrow's class. Well done. That's great. Well done, guys. Everyone, this, these are really, really cool. Now, the last piece of tape that you're going to need, well done, Emma Jane, is we're going to stick a bit of tape from the inside of the cup, the back, out to the outside. So we're really making sure that paper isn't going anywhere. So you're sticking it in here and sellotaping it on the edge here. So look, it's not going anywhere. None of it's going anywhere now, all right? And the more I've made of these, the more, more neat, the neater they're getting, okay? So these are my designs. So here's my lovely girly one, with my rose bush and my pink and my purple. And here's the one with the family, with the door. Here's my first one that I made with the traditional colors. And these are really cool. There's something you can have a bit of fun with. You could also hide stuff underneath them in the bathroom. Like if you have fancy soap, but you don't want your brother or sister using, you could totally hide it in the cup. There you go. Well done, guys. I've had such a good time today. I'm so happy to be back and see your lovely faces and create stuff with you. Make sure you send in photographs because I can't wait to see what yours look like up close. Well done, everyone. I am loving the stripes. I love the yellow and blue. That is brilliant. Well done. 
Perfect, guys. Isabel, well done. You're finished just in the nick of time. Fantastic, everyone. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank Thanks. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. You. Bye, guys. Bye.